Getting a Handle on Hands, Part 3, The Extrinsic Extensors. This is Dr. Bill Hayden, Hands. In Part 1, we discuss the intrinsic division. Part 2, we discuss the extrinsic flexors. In Part 3, we will focus on the extrinsic extensors. As in the previous two sessions, you will need a latex glove and your colored markers. The resources for this session are again two publications by the American Society for Surgery of the Hand, The Hand Examination and Diagnosis, and its companion book, The Hand Primary Care of Common Problems. Also, the clinical symposia published by SEBA Surgical Anatomy of the Hand is particularly valuable because of the netter drawings. Let's begin with a brief review of the three musculotendinous groups. The intrinsic group, the extrinsic flexors, and the extrinsic extensors. As you will recall, the muscles of the intrinsic group have their origins and insertions within the hand itself. These muscles are the hypothenar group, phoab, flexor digiti minimi, opponens digiti minimi, and the abductor digiti minimi. The thenar muscles, also phoab, the flexor pollicis brevis, the opponens pollicis, and the abductor pollicis brevis. Also, the eight interossei, which include the four dorsal interossei, the three palmar interossei, and the adductor pollicis included in this group, and finally the four lumbricals indicated by the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Those muscles indicated by blue are innervated by the ulnar nerve. The muscles indicated in red are innervated by the median nerve, and again the deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis has ulnar nerve innervation as noted by the blue crossbar. The extrinsic flexors include the flexor carpial narus at the wrist, the palmaris longus, and the flexor carpi radialis. The flexor pollicis longus at the interphalangeal joint of the thumb, the flexor digitorum superficialis at the proximal interphalangeal joints of the fingers, and the flexor digitorum profundus at the distal interphalangeal joints of the fingers. Those muscles indicated by the blue marker are innervated by the ulnar nerve, while the muscles indicated by the red marker are innervated by the median nerve. Recall that the innervation of the flexor digitorum profundus of the third finger is variable. The muscle bellies of the extrinsic extensors are located on the dorsal aspect of the forearm as shown. You can demonstrate this to yourself if you'll extend your wrist and then palpate the muscles over the dorsal aspect of the forearm and you will feel these muscles contracting. Unlike the extrinsic flexors and the intrinsic group, all extrinsic extensors are innervated solely by the radial nerve which we will indicate with a green marker. You can pause this video while you place your glove on your non-dominant hand and then let's begin. Over the dorsum of the wrist lies the extensor retinaculum. The extensor retinaculum creates six dorsal compartments of the wrist. The extrinsic extensors traverse through these compartments. The first three dorsal compartments comprise the snuff box on the radial aspect of the wrist as indicated by the black marker numbers 1, 2, and 3. You can pause this video to draw these numbers on your glove. Compartments 4, 5, and 6 continue across the dorsum of the wrist as indicated. Again, you can pause the video to put these numbers on your glove. 
The task now is to populate these dorsal compartments with specific extrinsic extensors. In the sixth dorsal compartment lies the extensor carpi ulnaris, indicated by green. Unfortunately, in the picture, the green marker actually appears more black. However, use your green marker to indicate all the extensor tendons. The following picture uses print font for clarity. In the fifth dorsal compartment of the wrist lies the extensor to the fifth finger, the extensor digiti minimi. Again, the following picture uses print font for clarity. The fourth dorsal compartment of the wrist contains the extensor digitorum communis tendons. These four extensor tendons of the fingers emanate from a common muscle that originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. In addition to the extensor digitorum communis, there is a fifth tendon in the fourth dorsal compartment of the wrist, the extensor indices proprius, or in English, the individual extensor of the index finger. One way to recall there are five tendons in the fourth dorsal compartment of the wrist is to remember that there are two poker hands among the dorsal compartments. One is located in the fourth dorsal compartment and the second poker hand is located in the snuff box as we shall see. This slide uses print font for clarity. Now we are moving to the anatomic snuff box, which comprises the first three dorsal compartments of the wrist on the radial side. Use your black marker to box in the first, second, and third dorsal compartments as demonstrated. In the third dorsal compartment of the wrist lies the extensor pollicis longus, the long extensor of the thumb. Again, this slide uses print font for clarity. There are two tendons in the second dorsal compartment of the wrist. These are the extensor carpi radialis longus and the extensor carpi radialis brevis. They are in the floor of the snuff box. Again, this slide uses print font for clarity. There are two tendons in the first dorsal compartment of the wrist. If you radially abduct your thumb, you can easily palpate the tendons of the first dorsal compartment along the radial aspect of the wrist. However, in most individuals, both tendons are not as readily visualized as they appear here. The following mnemonic may be helpful in remembering these two tendons. Every proper box use always proper labels, extensor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis longus. Use your black marker to enclose the first three dorsal compartments of the wrist. In summary, the first dorsal compartment of the wrist contains two tendons, the extensor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis longus. The second dorsal compartment of the wrist contains the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. The third dorsal compartment of the wrist contains the extensor pollicis longus. These are the five tendons of the snuff box or the first three dorsal compartments of the wrist. Another way to remember the tendons of the snuff box is the five card poker analogy. In the snuff box you have two pair and a lone fifth card, in this case tendon, the extensor pollicis longus. This is the anatomic snuff box. Print font is used for clarity. 
These are the six dorsal compartments of the wrist. Now let's review the six dorsal compartments of the wrist with their extrinsic extensors. The first three dorsal compartments of the wrist compose the anatomic snuff box. In the first dorsal compartment there are two extensor tendons, the extensor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis longus. In the second dorsal compartment, which is the floor of the snuff box, are the two tendons, the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. The third dorsal compartment of the wrist contains the extensor pollicis longus. Now going across the dorsum of the wrist in the fourth dorsal compartment are the extensors of the fingers and the extensor of the index finger. These are the extensor digitorum communis and the extensor indices proprius. In the fifth dorsal compartment is the extensor of the smallest finger, the extensor digiti minimi, and finally in the sixth dorsal compartment of the wrist is the extensor carpi ulnaris. All these tendons are innervated by the radial nerve. Let's review the three muscular tendinous groups. The muscles of the intrinsic group have their origins and insertions within the hand itself. The muscles of the extrinsic extensors can be palpated on the dorsal aspect of the forearm, while the muscles of the extrinsic flexors can be palpated on the volar aspect of the forearm. In the intrinsic group, the muscles innervated by the ulnar nerve are the hypothenar muscles, the flexor digiti minimi, the opponent's digiti minimi, and the abductor digiti minimi, the eight interossei, which include the four dorsal interossei, the three palmar interossei, and the adductor pollicis, and the third and fourth lumbricals. Also, the deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis is innervated by the ulnar nerve. Muscles innervated by the median nerve in the intrinsic group include the flexor pollicis brevis, the opponent's pollicis, and the abductor pollicis brevis, along with the first and second lumbricals. There are three extrinsic flexors at the wrist, the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, and the flexor carpi ulnaris. The flexor carpi ulnaris is innervated by the ulnar nerve, while the remaining two extrinsic flexors at the wrist are innervated by the median nerve as indicated in red. Also innervated by the median nerve include the flexor pollicis longus, and the flexor digitorum superficialis of the in proximal interphalangeal joints. The extrinsic flexors at the distal interphalangeal joints have either median or ulnar nerve innervation. The flexor digitorum profundus of the fourth and fifth fingers receive ulnar nerve innervation. The flexor digitorum profundus of the second finger receives median nerve innervation, while the flexor digitorum profundus of the third finger is either median or ulnar nerve innervation. Finally, the extrinsic extensors are contained within six dorsal compartments of the wrist. The extensor carpi ulnaris lies in the sixth dorsal compartment. The extensor to the fifth finger, the extensor digiti minimi, lies in the fifth dorsal compartment. The extensors to the four fingers lie within the fourth dorsal compartment. These are the extensor digitorum communis and the extensor indices proprius. The first three dorsal compartments of the wrist comprise the snuff box. In the third dorsal compartment is the extensor pollicis longus. In the second dorsal compartment, the floor of the snuff box contain the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. And finally, in the first dorsal compartment of the wrist lie the extensor pollicis brevis 
and the abductor pollicis longus. In part four of this series, we will discuss clinical pearls in evaluation and management of common hand problems. Special thanks to medical students Cynthia Chalitko, Chad Fuller, and Amadou Kamara. To receive an annotated Latin glossary for the hand, send your email request to jwhadenmd at gmail.com.